Uh, Veligion and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and today we'll be doing our E4 1.30 Burgundy Starting Moves Guide. In this guide I'll be talking about the estates and economy, army and diplomatics, how to deal with France, your first war against Provence, the Burgundian inheritance, as well as the missions and ideas that Burgundy should be going for. Before we start the video I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and commented as well as hit that subscribe button and leave the bell button on. If we can get this video to 400 likes I am gonna do another giveaway for an E4 DLC or for the base game if you don't have it or if you guys would like I can also do a giveaway for a completely different game seeing as most of you probably already have the DLCs and the base game so let me know in the comment section what you think is the best option heading on over to your estate screen the first thing you want to do is summon the diet and then go for whichever mission is best suited for you almost always you're gonna get the improved relations with the papal states mission so go for that if you do have it since it is quite easy to do next up we're gonna seize land from the estates which uh, gets rid of the negative effect that we had from the crownlands and then going to the nobilities we're gonna give supremacy over the crown as well as the right of council and the aristocratic councillors but not just yet next up we're gonna give the monopoly on wine and the oversight by the clergy to the clergy and for the bourgeoisie we're gonna give the monopoly on textiles as well as the free enterprises. After we do this, we're gonna go on over to our advisor screen and we're gonna get Mr. Michot Taillevant, which is a scripted advisor that Burgundy gets. He is 50% cheaper with an additional 20% because of the well-connected trait that our leader has. For your Diplo advisor, if you can get a trade efficiency guy, go for that. And for the army advisor, if you have a morale of armies or for example, a discipline advisor, that would be perfect as well. Now that we've actually hired Michaud Taillevant, we can get cheaper stability by 20% and I recommend going for the first stability. After we've taken our first stability, then we can give the aristocratic counselors privilege to the nobility, thus making our military advisor a lot cheaper. We're going to do the same thing for our bourgeoisie. We're going to give them the commercially advisory board, which is going to make our diplo guy cheaper as well. Thus, for all three advisors, we basically pay 1.5 ducats insane isn't it when you go to your trade screen do not change anything you're already having the most efficient trade setup by having one merchant transfer from the Bordeaux trade node as well as your other merchant collecting in the English channel. Burgundy's early expansion is literally tied to its mission tree. After you integrate Navarre's, you're gonna get claims on the Romandie area, which means you can go to war with Savoie and the Swiss. If you placate subjects, which lowers all of your subjects' liberty desire to below 1%, meaning zero, you're gonna get a permanent claim on the Lorraine area, which should be your first expansion path. As such, you need to placate all of your subjects below 0%. Another mission we need to do at the very start is alliance with the English and in order to do it we either need to be allied with the English or we can rival them and send an insult and the same thing we have to rival and send an insult to the French. Papal relations which we will be doing shortly is going to give us papal influence plus one and it's going to lead to the feast of pheasants which can eventually get us 50 opinion with all Catholic nations and a holy war CB against the Ottomans but this should not be your priority in the early game since you want to grab the Lorraine area and you want to stabilize your country first off. No matter what alliances you have, your rivals should always be France at the very start as well as Provence and if you want to get an alliance with the English that will help you out but it would be quite a bit tough to get the alliance with them. So it is your decision if you want to either get the alliance or you want to rival them. Rivaling the English is going to be a lot easier so you can do the English alliance mission from November 1444. In my situation, I am actually going to rival the English simply because in 90% of games, England will rival you. Even though I was lucky in my game not to be rivaled, I'm going to show you what it's like when the English rival you, which is the worst case scenario. So before anything else, we're going to send an insult to the English and an insult to the French. Thus, we can finish off our English alliance mission before we even unpaused. This mission is going to give us improved relations plus 25% and it's going to open up the second mission, which is a really great mission for us and we want to get 
this done as soon as possible. For this, we need to finish off the first mission and we need to have 100% relations with three of France's vassals. Before we get 100% relations, we need to get our own allies. And because you have already four junior partners, you only have one diplo slot available to you. Extremely great allies would be Austria if it is available and Aragon, which most of the times actually is available. So it really is up to you which one of these allies you want to go for. I recommend going for both of them if you can because going over your relation slots by one is not a big deal as long as it offers a lot of extra protection and help in your soon to come wars. So as I said we need to placate our subjects in order to get the claim on Lorraine and we can also do that before the first month finishes simply by going to the subject screen and then enabling support loyalists for all of our PU nations. This is going to give us the mission placate subjects and we get the claim on Lorraine getting this area here is going to give us access to Liege, Aachen, Loon and Upper Gelders basically unifying this whole region. Burgundy by the way is modeled on the Kingdom of Lotharingia which existed a few hundred years before this uh, start date and which basically started from the north namely the lowlands all the way to the Mediterranean Sea namely northern Italy. And Burgundy's missions basically focus and revolve around getting all of those claims back by giving you permanent claims on pretty much north Italy and all of this central area between the French and the Germans. When it comes to your army, you want to unify the two armies that you have and have one single 16,000 unit stack. And in order to reinforce your army, you will be hiring a mercenary company, namely the Free Company, which is extremely cheap. They are basically 70% cheaper than your regular units here, but you will be going over the force limit. After you finish the Placate Subjects mission, you should go to your subjects and go to Navarre's and make sure you enable Divert Trade. This is going to improve your trade situation in the Champagne trade node. As soon as you get your diplomats back, I would start improving relations with Orléans and with Bourbonnais. And whenever you get your diplomats back, you should also do the same thing with Armagnac. Once we have a hundred relations with all three of these nations, we can enact the League of the Public Wheel mission, which is going to give us 50% liberty desire with all of France's vassals, as well as give us some permanent claims on Ile de France, Champagne and Orléans. Declaring war on Provence in 1444 December would be a bit of a suicide mission to be honest with you. So what I do recommend is waiting for your mission to finish, namely League of the Public Wheel, which is going to ruin all of France's vassals, thus weakening them considerably. If you steadily improve relations with Orléans, Armagnac and Bourbonnais, you should have the League of the Public Wheel by 1447. Enact the League which is going to give 50% liberty desire with all of France's vassals and you're going to get claims on the majority of the French land. At this point, you have a choice between going to war with Provence or simply attacking the French directly. Regardless, Provence will be joining, so you could just co them. But if you do attack the French directly, you're going to get the Aragonese to join you also. The French are going to be in a war against the English for the provinces that the English have on the French mainland. What I do recommend is take a loan in case you don't have enough cash, which you probably will not have, and hire the mercenary company, the Free Company, Company, as well as start maintaining and getting ready for the war. Whenever you're ready, declare war on the French, make sure you call in the Aragonese and make sure you cobbledrate province so that you can take these provinces from them. I recommend setting a province that is close to your nation as the war goal so that you can get a ticking war score faster than you would otherwise be getting. France will have all of its vassals above 50% liberty desire because of the debuff that we gave them from our own mission. As such, you will only be fighting the French, not the entire of, of France's military potential. So it's going to be a lot easier than you expect. Make sure that you rush for Paris and afterwards the Fort and Chartres before going for the capital of Provence in Anjou. Sieging down all of the Provence provinces in the Lorraine area and just starting the siege on Anjou should be enough to peace out Provence. I would only take these two provinces to connect my lands as the AE would be too high taking more HRE provinces and I would definitely go for the humiliation so that I can get more ticks towards my age bonus. Peace them out and then we're going to be dealing with the French who don't have any allies and they also have mostly disloyal vassals. If you do take out their vassals armies they will start becoming loyal again towards the French and start helping them out against you. If that happens just quite plainly see 
siege out everything in France. I recommend after you finished carpet sieging the entirety of France that you keep it like this for a few years to completely ruin their economy and devastate their nation so that after you do the peace treaty all of their vassals are going to be super disloyal once again and also because your AE is super high as I previously mentioned because you took Barra and Verdun which was 30 AE and you need to wait a bit just so you can get more provinces from the French in the peace treaty. You will not be able to wait for too many years as the war exhaustion is going to grow considerably and it will eventually ruin your own nation. So you will have to peace them out. Now when you do peace them out, I don't recommend taking Paris in the first war since it's going to get you a massive coalition. On the other hand, if you take Nemours, Tra and Arim, that's going to get you a smaller coalition of nations you already have a truce with mostly. You should also take all of the money that you can as well as war reparations or if you can better yet transfer trade power piece them out and that's gonna get your nation a lot bigger but still not big enough to uh, enact the mission king of the franks you're gonna need three more provinces one of these provinces being paris itself so in the next war against the french make sure you take paris and whichever other provinces you can take that will not incur a massive coalition with the money you get from the french you should be able to pay off your loans and you can also also embrace the renaissance by the time the war finishes make sure to also lower the war exhaustion that you will definitely have by now as it is going to be quite high and core up all of your newly added provinces now we have a much stronger burgundy which definitely doesn't need to worry about its existence as much as it did in 1444 around this time you should also start integrating navars so that you can do the integrate navars mission that's going to give you more claims to the south of you i also recommend deleting some of your forts including the fort in Picardy and the fort in Luxembourg. The fort in Oxera is also semi-useful. I would keep it though for your next war with the French in case things go bad. After the war is finished, pretty much all of the French vassals are going to be super disloyal and this means that you can even encourage them to rebel against their former masters by improving your relations a bit. After integrating Navars, you're going to have a lot of different expansion possibilities and Burgundy in general has insanely good expansion possibilities. First off, your main target should be France and taking over the French vassals from them whenever you get a chance. But as you can see, you can also expand in the Swiss and Savoyard areas as well as the HRE itself. Expanding in the HRE, however, I don't recommend since you would have to deal with the Austrians or whoever the Emperor is going to be. That is not something that you like to fight out. When it comes to the Burgundian inheritance, truth be told, the whole inheritance is tied to your special heir, Charles I de Bourgogne. Once he becomes a king, that is going to set the timer for the Burgundian inheritance to trigger. Now, the requirements are that Charles I is king and died and that you have Marie as your heir or you have no heir there is a chance that you will get a special heir now this can happen through events or just regularly can happen through extremely good luck i was lucky and i got louis de bourgogne which means that the inheritance is not gonna trigger for me if this guy manages to survive until he's 15 years old. If he dies, then I have a minus 95% chance of getting a new heir because of the Burgundian succession crisis modifier. Having the Burgundian inheritance trigger for Burgundy can be good, but it can also be extremely bad. You might be able to get some PUCBs against a lot of nations in the HRE, but at the same time, if not played well, you can lose all of your lands or even get annexed completely. If you're not sure what to do about the Burgundian inheritance, I recommend just killing off Charles before he even ascends to be a king. If you kill off Charles when he's still an heir, then the Burgundian inheritance will never trigger. I personally think that it's not worth the gamble just for a couple of PUCBs on various nations. When you already have so many expansion possibilities and your mission tree gives you insanely great ideas and a lot of permanent claims on pretty much all of your neighbors already. If you do choose to kill off Charles from the beginning of the game, then make sure that you support loyalists and all of your PU donations from the start and that you get the mission placate subjects before you actually kill them off. As the death of Charles will definitely increase the liberty desire of all of your nations because of the drop in prestige, which is also something we can easily fix by giving the patronage of the arts privilege to the bourgeoisie. Thus their loyalty returns to us, but not 
not enough to get the mission so ensure that you get the mission before. If you manage to get out of the succession with your country still independent or if you manage to avoid the succession by the 1500s then you're gonna get plus 33% chance of a new heir until the end of the game as well as diplo annexation costs minus 15% that will definitely help you out with integrating your various subjects. When unlocking your first idea set it really depends on how many points you have on either admin military or diplo when choosing your first idea set because there are good ideas in all three categories for the Burgundians. If you have a lot of extra military I would recommend going for offensive as your first military idea. If you have a lot of diplo then you should go for diplomatic ideas as Burgundy definitely can use it or if you do go through with the whole Burgundian inheritance and you end up inheriting all of the lowlands then don't take diplomatic and take trade ideas instead. If you have a lot of admin points then you should go for the religious ideas seeing as in a few years the reformation is going to start and if you have this sweet 75% AECB you can easily eat up a lot of your neighbors who will be switching over to a different religion or if you switch to a different religion then pretty much it's a free for all within Europe. I didn't go through the Burgundian inheritance in too much detail because it would literally take me 10 minutes just to explain and to show all the different options of the Burgundian inheritance. So if you'd like me to do a video on that, let me know in the comment section below and I can do a video exactly discussing the Burgundian inheritance and how you should be going through it step by step. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did then leave a like and comment as well as subscribe and leave the bell button on for future notifications whenever I release a video. And I'd also like to thank all of my patrons. If you like to become a patron then check the link in the description and until the next one have a great day